Hey everyone, this is Lara and Good News Ministry. I'm driving. <laughs> Typical, the Lord puts messages on my heart right when I'm in the middle of doing something. Anyway, I was just driving along and I looked out to my left and there was a truck. And on the truck it says, huge letters, it says, got junk? Question mark. And then it says, world's largest junk removal system. And as soon as I saw the words got junk, I just blurted out loud. Of course, nobody is with me right now other than the Lord and now you watching this. I blurted out loud, yes, like yes, as exclamation point. Yes, I have junk. And the reason I say this and the reason I believe I, I just feel so strongly compelled to share this message with you as I'm driving along is because I have been working very hard in days past on something that the Lord has convicted me many times through the years is a major problem in my life, um, which is the state of my mind. And um, specifically, I have allowed thoughts and feelings into my heart and mind that are absolutely dishonoring to the Lord. And I would say the absolute biggest, aside from negativity and complaining and the usual junk, um, has been worry and fear. And the Lord has been dealing with me over the past week or two. I've had a, um, a sort of a moderate health issue, but it's been tough because as I shared in one of my recent video devotionals, I'm also dealing with a decades long battle with an eating disorder. And so the, the two are interacting and it's, um, it's hard because <laughs> I'm having, to be honest with you, I'm uh, needing to gain weight because I struggle and have struggled for many years on and off with anorexia. And um, I am dealing with a digestive issue that I believe is worry based. Go figure. So here I am needing to gain weight, but then I eat food and it's bothersome to my stomach and digestive system. And I'm smiling now, but it's actually not very funny when I'm going through it. And the reason I say all of this is because in the midst of it, the Lord's been dealing with me and has led me to repentance and showed me that I am not watching what comes into my mind. And even when I'm allowing things in my mind that don't belong there and are not honoring to God, I am not recognizing them and acknowledging them and getting rid of them. And the Lord has just made so abundantly clear that we are to walk by faith and not by fear. And as he says in, in the Old Testament, the Bible says um, to guard our hearts with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life or keep your heart with all diligence. So in other words, we're to watch what comes into our hearts and minds. And the Bible says that the heart above all else is deceitfully wicked. And um, the Bible also, it, it, the Lord explains to us in the Bible that it's not what comes um, that comes into us that's a problem. The Pharisees were always caught up with their appearances and, and they were trying to clean the outside of the cup, so to speak. Um, and I'm not quoting exactly, and I'm driving and trying to be careful as I drive. But the bottom line is they were concerned with the outside and the Lord was saying that the real problem is what comes out of us, not what comes into us. Um, in other words, they were caught up with like, what foods are we eating? We shouldn't eat this and we shouldn't eat that and we need to do it perfectly, blah, 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 blah. And it's food, as the Lord explains in the Bible, it's just going to come out, um, to be honest. <laughs> and what the real problem is, is what comes out of our heart, out of our mouths, out of our actions, out of our being. And um, when we allow fear in and we allow worry in and we're not watching and guarding our hearts, what do you think happens to our actions? What do you think happens to our mouths? Then we're speaking and acting out of fear and worry and any other sin that we allow into our hearts and that we don't get rid of when we recognize that it's there and it, and it needs to go. And, and this could be anything. It could be envy, bitterness, jealousy, vengeance, judgment, condemnation, criticism, um, negative thoughts about people, evil thoughts about people, complaining, self-pity. That's been a big one with um, me through the years. The so Lord's dealing with this and he says in, in the word of God, it says that um, we are to take every thought captive and we're to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The Bible also tells us very specifically in Philippians 4 what we should think about. And it's very clear in the Bible what we shouldn't think about. Um, I just was noticing recently in 1 Corinthians 13 that the Bible says in the King James Version, it says, charity seeketh not. Um, uh, for herself basically and I'm sorry I'm not quoting exactly but love does not seek 
love is not self-seeking in other words um, so our thoughts when we have um, as in one version it talks about selfish ambitions we have to watch out are our thoughts all based on self I struggle with that too can you tell I struggle um, I'm someone I tell people I preach from the trenches um, of this life and anyway I smile because yes this is hard I don't like the conviction the chastening is tough but the Lord says despise not the chastening um, of the Lord um, and in other words when he brings chastening and correction and conviction we should not despise it he's a loving father he's bringing correction he wants us in his forever fellowship which we can only have through repentance and believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and his death and resurrection and committing our lives to him he wants us in our fellowship in his fellowship he wants us to grow ever closer to him he wants to conform us and make us ever more like himself and he wants to bless us he wants us to enjoy our relationship with him that we can only have through um, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he wants us to experience this life on this earth and forever um, in his presence enjoying him experiencing him and enjoying the blessings of this life that he bestows upon us um, but so he brings this chastening to bring that correction that we need and so I don't like that part but the but I have joy um, first and foremost for my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ there's no greater than joy than him and, and having this relationship with him and I also have joy because I'm excited to start learning how to do what's right and, and, and not do what's wrong and so I and perhaps you in listening to this have to watch out carefully for my thoughts and I find that I'm so prone to worry and anxiety that I don't even think twice about it. I just, I let the thoughts in, I start I going off on a tangent, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, days, weeks, months, sometimes years, worrying about something. And I don't even realize I'm worrying because I'm so used to worrying. And worry is sin. God says without faith it is impossible to please Him. And He said that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Again, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, while the things that are not seen are eternal. We are to look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We are to look to the Bible. We are to look to his word. We are to be thinking thoughts that are glorifying to God and acting in a way that is glorifying to God. There's hope in this message, my friend. If you are being convicted, as I have been for years now, and especially in days past, then understand that that conviction needs to come, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But don't stop there. God finishes what he starts in us. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to be studying, reading, and living by the Bible. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Um, we receive the Spirit of God. He comes to live inside of us when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord, when we turn our lives, our hearts and lives over to Him. And we are to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. We are to live our lives led by the Spirit of Christ who lives inside of us. I hope this message is an encouragement to you. I think back to that truck that was driving by that I needed to see got junk. And it talks about that that truck had the advertisement about it being the greatest um, junk removal system in the world. Let me tell you, the greatest junk removal system in the world comes in the Bible, and it comes by the Spirit of God who brings the conviction, and the chastening, and the correction. He leads us to repentance and His loving kindness. And First John one and nine says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If you need the junk hauled off, and we all do from time to time, I, I try on a daily basis to repent whenever necessary, turn to the Lord. You don't need to hire that truck that was driving down the highway. You need to recognize that you have sin in your heart or that's come out of your mouth or that's in your actions or all three of the above. You need to go to the Lord, put your faith in Him as Lord. He tells us to trust him with all of our hearts and you and, and ask him for forgiveness. Seek his forgiveness, but don't just ask, don't just say, I'm sorry. Turn from the sin and in the strength of Christ, for the glory of Christ, learn how to do what's right instead of what's wrong. Honey, honey, <laughs> honey, yeah, you whoever is watching this, I have a long, long, long way to go, but I am bound and determined not to live the way that I was living in a manner that is dishonoring and displeasing to God. I'm bound and determined and resolved 
to be a true, full-fledged follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says those who follow him, if he says, if you want to come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And some of the, the this work that we need to do, some of this dying to self and living for Christ can be very, very tough. For me, it is a total life change to go um, from living with a heart and mind filled with worry to learning how to love the Lord with all of our my heart and mind and soul and strength. And he showed me in my heart that, that loving him with all of our mind, that means that what fills my mind needs to be glorifying to God. If, if it's filled with worry all the time, that's not loving the Lord with all of my mind. I want to love the Lord with all of my heart. It's his greatest command. My friend, please visit me and Good News Ministry online. You are welcome to sign up for my Good News daily writing messages. There are messages in writing as well as video devotionals. Again, it's goodnews.love. And thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to get back to my driving. Bye-bye.